we can use DNA to detect, uh, with a reasonable degree of reliability, certain genetic disease uh, propensities within our genomes. Most things that, that we get as diseases and even as traits are not 100% controlled by DNA. Among the few that, that really are reliable uh, is Huntington's disease. Very nasty neurological condition, strikes midlife, and uh, invariably uh, kills people before their time. So very unpleasant. And it runs in families. It is genetic. There's a genetic test for it. And if this genetic test comes up positive, uh, you may as well cash in your IRA because there's no point keeping it. The problem, though, is that people want to keep that kind of information as private as they can. That's very intimate knowledge. You don't want to share that with the world. What happens if you have an identical twin? One of the twins wants to find out, and the other, for whatever reason, wants to let nature take its course. Identical twins are usually very close, right? psychologically, emotionally, as well as genetically. If one of them has the gene for Huntington's, so does the other. And if one of them decides to do the test, they can make an arrangement to say, okay, I'll do the test and find out. I won't tell you. I won't tell you the result. That's useless, because you know identical twins, they're going to know. Right? They will know because when, uh, when the one twin who gets a test comes home and throws a big party, uh, decides to uh, uh, tell all her friends, well, you know, it'll get back to the twin. So is that a violation of the, of the rights, of the privacy rights of the twin who did not want to take the test? Surprisingly, in the scientific and medical community, when people are asked this question, people who have Huntington's running in the family, do you want to have the test or not? The majority of people say no. To me as a scientist, I'm surprised because I would want to know. But you know, people have the right to the privacy. We can't force them, and it's entirely up to them. We have to respect that, and that's, I respect that too. Uh, so that's, that's one of the privacy issues that we have to deal with. When we get down to things like ethical considerations, we have to consider the, uh, the privacy rights again of, uh, of young people. Like, should children have their DNA tested? Well, again, if uh, if you're parents of a child and you have some condition or even an innocuous trait in your family, you might be curious to know whether your child will, will start showing this particular trait or disease susceptibility. But is that a violation of the child's rights? Because once you find out, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Information is out there, particularly if they post that information on one of the public databases. The child never had a say in whether they want to have that information released or not. They don't have a representative representing the child's interest, except for the parents, of course. We cede that, that representation to the parents. But are the parents working on the child's best interest or something that they themselves are interested in? Another question that society needs to, to grapple with. A more uh, malevolent situation is where people might be looking at adopting a child and they go baby shopping. They go to different agencies. They visit with babies and surreptitiously take a sample of spit from the baby, and the baby, of course, is happy to provide spit, typically. Send it away, get a DNA analysis, and on the basis of that DNA analysis, unbeknownst to the agency, or the baby, obviously, they choose which baby they're going to adopt, for whatever reason. Right? Blood type? Hair color? Some frivolous features like that? Who knows? The parents never disclose. Right? Nobody knows about this except the parents. That is an ethical issue that society needs to be aware of. Uh, you have other, other ethical considerations. Uh, a child is born with a, a genetic defect, right? The, the kidney disease or something. Their kidneys are going to fail by the, the time they're teenagers or young adults. The parents decide, let's have another child to provide a kidney for their sibling. Hmm. Let's make sure that the new child doesn't have the gene that causes the kidney disease. Hmm. Selection of babies. And the child, the second child, the donor child, has no idea that their lot in life, they were conceived to be an organ donor for their sibling. They didn't have a say in that. I mean, most siblings are, are willing, but not all. 
and they were never given the opportunity to say, yes, I want to be born so that I can provide my sibling with a kidney. Who has the answer for that? No one. So for the large, you know, these, a large number of these questions really haven't been discussed by society at large. Bioethicists are, are aware of them and they discuss them, but they tend to be academics, you know, hidden away in an ivory tower. And society at large is not aware yet of the implications, of the opportunities, of the, the upside and the downside of all of these technologies of using DNA information.